that? I don't actually know where to start. Um, back in 2016, I um, I was in the process of creating a feature length film. Uh, well, I've written the first act of the script for a module of my university course. Um, and I was sort of writing it, and then part of me was like, oh, it'd be great if I could actually make something out of this. So I actually then altered the way I was writing it in a way that I could comfortably film it. So it's not like, say, oh, massive like VFX and sound and... and um, um sfx uh special effects and visual effects um i can't go massively on those sort of things because you know uh on one man i can't do all of those things um if i got a lot of time maybe but uh so i just decided to write it in a way that i was like this is actually doable you know as long as i've got a camera a crew you know i feel like this could this could be done um, so I wrote, rewrote the script in a way that I could film it, um, and then that sort of like the first act is what I then uh, submitted for my 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 degree uh, for my module. Um, but I didn't just finish obviously with the first act. I then wrote the second and the third act as well, which wasn't submitted. But I really wanted to see like, you know, after I graduate, what do I want to do? You know, where, where's my train of thought, where am I going, am I leaving ABBA, am I staying in ABBA? Uh, there was loads of different thoughts and stuff going around in my head. And part of me was like, I really want to make this film. I really want to create a film. Because I've done many different films with um, uh, friends of mine that were doing the film module. Uh, film, not film module, film degree. Because uh, I was doing a drama degree and they were doing a film degree. Um, so... They were making like a film a week or something like that, a film every two weeks. And I uh, got, got uh, close with uh, Paddy, Barry and Nick. It's a shadow of a man. Nothing but a shell. He's been dragging us down ever since we left the trenches. He's at it. A blind man can see that. He may as well be dead already! Um, but we were doing like different little films and stuff each and every week. Um, which was so much fun, like unbelievable amount of fun. And I was just like, and my degree didn't offer up what I was expecting it to offer up. I mean, I don't think anyone's degree offers up what they want anyway. Um, it's more of what you do besides the, the degree during your university years is what sort of stimulates you i guess that's the bit that you take away it's the experience and the journey of university and the other things you come across rather than the degree itself um because me and mikey towards the end of our degree were like we should have done film but at the same time we probably might not have been happy with film because we wanted to act and we've acted once or twice throughout three years um but the the one i did do one of the big ones where i played um uh russell hoban's grantser in ridley walker phenomenal absolutely loved that piece of drama and that whole whole collective production together he <laughs> don't jump as much as it used to <laughs> all the charcoal painters spray them don't they oh i don't know i ain't seen all the charcoal burners do you know any dying songs I'm too young for dying! Like Dying Jumpers Red, I mean. You mean like the sound of beer song? That's it? No. <laughs> well, no, nothing like that. Um, anyway, getting off topic here. Um, 
So that was that was all good. All the acting side of things, and then joining my friends doing the film side of things. That was all great. And I was like, I want to make one of my own. So, um, like I said, with this uh, creative writing module I was doing, I then decided to go and write the full script. Um, I really just go for it. <laughs> Yeah, we got the script together, um, I then put out an audition call, um, I got uh, friends far in between um, that decided to, to, to audition for it, which was great, because I was like, oh wow, people are actually interested and want to be part of it, but it was just playing with the equipment, getting everything, and then it was like, well, who's going to shoot me? Because, you know, I wrote it, of course I'm starring in it, if I, who's going to shoot me? when I'm acting and it's like well I could just do loads of tripod shots and I was like it won't look right you know and then it's like but then who's going to do the sound I can't like just set the sound up on like um uh like a jib or a crane or, or something you know and just hang and suspend it over it's it, sort of like I only need a crew so I contacted uh, my film friends um to see if they were like available to help out and stuff um but at the same time, what I need to bear in mind here is this is after we'd all graduated. So this is, we all graduated in July, 15th of July, 2016. And recording started in the October. Ah. Uh, so by that time, everyone, you know, nobody really knows where they're going to be or what they're going to be doing. Some people have gone back home. Some people have set in Abba. Um, some people have moved in with their partners somewhere else. Um, or, you know, got jobs um, somewhere else. So they've moved to go towards these jobs. Um, so it was hard to know where everyone was going to be. Um, so, so I got a few people in to help me film so I was like ah oh, this is great so I don't have to solely worry about filming myself I can let someone go more experienced with cameras as well uh to start filming uh us so it's like three years ago now so trying to remember everything is really difficult uh but when I got the crew together we then did some test shots and stuff like that to see and also we needed a good a good bond a good chemistry um, to make sure, you know, we'd get on and we could see, they could see my vision as much as I could see their vision as such. May yes, it's my film, but I need to, like, they're going to be bringing things that I never thought of. So, you know, I need to stay open to that and, um, and you know, go along with the creative process and not be too precious of what I created. Then, during this time as well, I was working uh, for a clothing retailer um, as like part time, and that's what funded me to stay in Abba for a further year. So then coming back to uh, August, September, um, I was doing shop fits. So I did a shop fit for Ludlow, um, and then we did a shop. Well, I did a shop fit for our Abba store when we first moved in because it was a brand new store when I joined. Uh, so we did the shop fit there, and then I did the shop fit for Ludlow, and then Tembi. Now Tembi is a big part of my life. <laughs> so, so we were doing this film. You know, I got the cast and crew together. I got everything together. Everything was, you know, we'd done uh, some rehearsals and stuff. And I was like, we got this. We are ready to go. We can literally start filming. I've done location scouting, location filming. I've done test footage, uh, so I was like, yeah, 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 we got this, we got this, we got this, let's go, 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 go. Um, so that's all, I'm trying to think dates. It's gonna be September something. I was ready to start recording in like October-ish. October 6th is what I got in mind. Um, and we were all good to go and then work asked if I could because that was it I was doing was a Tembi shop fit I think like first of September or something like that I went to Tembi did the shop fit we're doing the shop fit um 
uh, ready for like this new team and everyone to come in. And then all of a sudden, the new manager that was going to be the manager of the Tammy store was like, well, no, she didn't even say anything. She literally just disappeared off the face of the earth. So the area manager asks me, he's like, Kieran, are you, because you've graduated now, you're free, you're available, are you okay to sort of just look after the shop for like a week or two uh, before we get like a new manager in? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but this was like thrown into the deep end. This is what I love. And so straight in and, and yeah, so I was there for like a week or two, stopped in this hotel. Um, the hotel is called the Giltar in Tembe. don't know if I pronounced that right, Gilta, Giltar, right? That place made me feel at home so much, like a great place, great staff, great food. You know, I, I mean, spoilers, I ended up staying there. Am I going to go straight into it? Yeah, I ended up staying there for three months. I mean, I went back to ABBA during the weekends. Uh, for my days off, which was about a two hour drive, I think it was. I literally stayed in a hotel for three months, which I really miss because you had like, you were being waited on hand and foot and it wasn't costing you anything. I saved so much money doing that. Oh, it was such a great experience living, uh, technically living in Tendi. But anyway, so I ended up being there for three months, right? But then I think it was in the October, I had a week off. And that's when I then decided like, oh, okay, so I've got some time off now. I contacted the casting crew, because yeah, don't forget I'm talking about the film I was going to do. Um, not Tembi, or work. We were filming the beginning, the opening um, of the film. And this was with Rachel Smith, and our um, camera operator, uh, Goja Zempa. I think I pronounced that right. It was, it was only us three uh, that really needed to be on location, uh, mostly because with all the equipment in the car and ourselves, there's not enough space for anyone else. Um, plus, there was no real need for sound. I was directing and doing sound, whereas Goja was on the camera and then Rach was obviously acting. I filmed... Uh, that's it. We filmed, I filmed like a, a weekend earlier or two weekends earlier with Rachel in the location. Um, I filmed her and she was acting just the two of us. Then the Goju was available and we managed to then film with her. Um, so there was like a mix of Goja filming and a mix of me filming um, on two separate days. Uh, That was it. I think they had work or something like that, so we weren't able to film for the rest of the week or something like that. They had other commitments. So I was like, oh, that's fine, we'll, we'll get back to this. Um, so then I filmed the other scenes with myself, which is like a driving scene. Quinn came down to see me during this week, or later on towards the end of the week as well, because we were playing with the drone. Um, and then I got Quinn to film me with the drone while I was driving the car. And then my friend Emily Jeffrey, uh, she was playing. Oh. oh, I can't remember who she was playing. Jessica. I think her name was Jessica. I think it was actually. I think she was playing Jessica. Which is, makes no sense to you because you don't even know who Jessica is or who any of the characters are. But anyway, she was playing Jessica. And uh, she helped um, take photos and do like loads of behind the scenes because I was like, we need some behind the scenes for like marketing purposes and stuff like that. And then obviously I then had to go back towards Tembi and work there. And I think at this point, I've been working at Tembi for like six weeks or something like that. So I went back and they still hadn't found like a manager, no one had really like applied um, for, for the position. So I was still having to work there and it just became, I, I was just having to postpone everything with the cast and the crew. And I felt like I, I had them at my beck and call and I felt that was unfair of them because 
they've you know taken time out of their 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 lives as such to help me pursue something I really wanted to do, but I was constantly like, oh yeah, we do it this week. Oh no, I can't do it this week. Oh, I do, it. and it's just. Uh, so I was like, guys, I just feel like I'm messing you around. It's not fair on you because um, I didn't even really know what was going on, what I was doing, where I was going. Um, so I was like, I think we just have to postpone this this whole thing until I'm back. Then I come towards the end of the time working in Tembe, go to head back towards Abbott. And then I was asked to go to Milton Keynes and um, work there and help them pick their store up um, over the Christmas break because they needed the, the two managers had left um, and the, the team we were all fresh and new so they needed training um, and the school was the store was underperforming so it was um it was a very interesting time and they were asked like Kieran would you be interested in going and doing that over in Milton Keynes and I was I was really unsure i wasn't sure what i wanted to do or the choices i wanted to make as such at that time because it's like i really enjoying the freedom of of working at the store somewhat being in control uh, you know like bossing people around it's quite fun um and um and just like the, the living on my own as such, even though it was in a hotel, living on my own, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, being able to walk, run along the beach and stuff. I mean, obviously, Milton Keynes was on many beaches, but I was like, Ugh. and I was like, I've already postponed the film, so I'm not really letting anyone down. I really do want to make the film. And then I was just like compartmentalizing everything. And I just stopped and I thought, no, think, 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 Kieran. What, what are you trying to get from all these experiences? What are you trying to do? And it's like, if you say no to this opportunity, you might not get asked again, right? And you enjoyed it. You enjoyed doing it. Whereas the film, you've already put it at rest by postponing it. So you're not really letting anyone down. And the longer it takes for you to come back to it, you're only going to have developed yourself and got better and under a better understanding of everything you're going to be doing film wise because if i was to make that film today it would be a hundred times better than if i'd have made it back then so it was like mm, so i was like yeah i'll go to milton Keynes. so that was that was that was fun I mean, it was it was a lot of fun. I had a great time in Keynes. I mean, there was no beast to run along, um, but it was a, another great experience that you know I would I wouldn't go back in time and not do. You know, I'd still go and do it because it was oh, it was great. And then I went, <laughs> so I was there for two months in Milton Keynes again, living in a hotel. Um, but that was that was that was great really because I made the most of my days off then um, because you know I worked. A lot and I was always like on my own which was great I loved um, but it was like oh, I've got time off so I need to make the opportunity of these days off which was it was nice because it did push me to go do things um, and then after the Milton Keynes uh, run was over I was then asked to go to Gloucester <laughs> so I then worked in Gloucester for a bit um, I think I was in Gloucester for two weeks and then, that was it, while I was in Milton Keynes, I was then told there was an opportunity to go work in Bath um, to, as an assistant manager. So I was like, oh, okay. So I went to go to Gloucester, went to work there. Then I had an interview in Bath while I was working in Gloucester, so I had to go down to Bath. And then I got the job in Bath. Then I moved to Melksham, lived there in February 2017. Yeah, and then in the September 2017, I then moved to Chapter Mallet. I lived in Chapter Mallet and worked in Wells, right? So a whole lot. So it's been very consecutive work-wise, pretty much since I graduated. So I never had chance to go back and revisit this film 
I mean, I managed to boost my my creative and filmmaking skills since then. I mean, it's been a long-winded story up to this point, hasn't it? Um, but it's as I'm remembering it, it's like, oh yeah, that happened, that happened. I'll have to edit a lot out because <laughs> this is going to end up being like seven hours long. Um, and then I, because I was developing like my filming side of things and stuff, and I was like, I need to, you know, I've developed all this, the, the, the vlogging and stuff like that over this period of time. But I need to, to do something with this. I need to, you know, make a film again. Um, so I look back at this current, this, this, this film called As The Tide Grows. Now, As The Tide Grows was a title I got from a song um, called Oblivion by Zara. Um, because I did a little, when I was back in Abba, uh, I have no structure to this whole thing, do I? This, <laughs> uh, I did a short little video piece where I, I just filmed myself with my iPhone around Abba. And put the song over the top of it, yeah, original. Um, and in that, the the lyric that goes as the tide grows, and the way they sing it, I was like, oh, I really like that lyric. Um, so I was like, oh, and because it's set in Aberystwyth, this film, it's like as the tide grows, you know, as the tide grows, as the story progresses. And so I was revisited it, looked back over the script and stuff, and I was like, oh, I, that wasn't written particularly well, or I didn't like that particular scene, or. You know, and I look back at the footage, the archive footage that we did get, and I was like, I really should do something with this, but I was like, I can't make a film out of it. And that's when I then started to write alone. Um, and then, you know, you should know. Uh, I did alone, I went through the whole process, it's done, it's now out, you can see it, there's behind the scenes. It was a good trip. Would have been better if I wasn't looking for work. I am immensely proud of you. You know that, right? Okay, weirdo, I'm gonna go now. Oi! That was that was great and I was like I really need to go back and look at the original footage and try and create something from it so that's what I did so I've got two pieces of of film one which is like character con well they're both character concepts but they're also clips because they don't exactly create a concept of the character as well as it's it is in the script um, because there's aspects of James's character, the male lead, that you know he's he's um, uh, uh, astronomer studying a uh, technical engineering degree um, because he really wanted to become um, an astronaut, um, and then that's not really shown in in that particular concept clip because. We hadn't filmed anything like that at that point, so it's not really technically a concept, character concept, but it is. But it's also a character. It's also a, a trailer clip. It's it's confusing. It might make more sense when you see it. Um, and then with Alexandra, um, hers is more so a concept, character concept, where she's very much happy on her own. She's happy out in the wilderness, that's where she's at her happiest, and she's trying to obsess over trying to take the perfect photo. Um, which, you know, if you see the whole film, it will make more sense of her obsession, you know, if we'd have filmed more. And the same with James and his um, aspirations, you know, that would make more sense over a film, rather than in these short three minute clips, I think they are, I managed. So I looked back at the footage and I was like, yes, got to make something from this archive footage. I was like, I need to make something that's coherent, that you can understand while watching it, and it's not a mix of things thrown together. So I spent a long time really working with it, and I wouldn't allow myself to refilm things. I wouldn't allow myself to go and like, oh, it would be better if I could redo this drone shot. Because the drone shot has got like a weird wobble in it, and plus it was filmed back on the Beatbop, not on the Mavic. 
um, but I was like, no, I want to use the footage we filmed back then because that's the challenge for me. And, you know, I, I, I wanted to make it, I don't know why I wanted to challenge myself further than I already had, but I was like, yeah, I can only use that footage. So it was really, it was really interesting and a lot of fun to try and create something out of nothing. Um, and I've got to tell you, I come very close to achieving what I originally pictured when I first wrote the script for these particular scenes. So they are, they are both the opening scenes for each character. So as the story, as the film goes linear, 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 linearly, as the film goes in a linear order, <laughs> um, linearly, is that a word? I don't know. I don't think it is. Um, as the film goes in linear order, um, it will start with uh, Alexandra's uh, opening clip. So the idea was the camera will be filming up at the um, sky, the blue sky, and a blue bird would fly into frame, right? And you'd follow this bird down onto a rock. I don't know how the hell we were going to film that. But it was ambitious. Maybe I'd do something with VFX or something. I don't know. But that was the idea. Bird fly down to the rock. Right. And then the focus would be on the bird. And then as the bird flew off, you saw Alexandra in the background walking into frame. And the focus would then focus back onto her. Somewhat of an ambitious yet simple shot. It's not. But she's walking into frame in front of a giant waterfall. And she's then taking some photos and stuff. And then we follow her on her journey through this wilderness, her taking photos and her really just soaking in the atmosphere and the environment and just, you know, really feeling at one with nature. Um, so that was the purpose of her opening shot. And I feel we came very close, like we filmed a lot more for Alexandra than we did for James. So I felt like, you know, we definitely got what we needed there for that one. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get any dialogue, but there was no dialogue needed for Alexandra's opening scene. But there was dialogue needed for James's opening scene. But his 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 dialogue was a voiceover, right? So in the opening scene, you hear a car revving through the hills, right? But it's a bit of a blackout, and then it comes into frame. bit in blackout originally i was, had james saying something like a uh like a spaceship countdown to launch so sort of like a nerdy thing to put in but i was like it sort of grounds his character a bit more it puts a bit more light onto the character and you're like oh wh why did you do this why do you do that so when you go along with the story you can like ah he's just and plus let's face it guys whenever in a car you always think you're like especially if you've gone to see like a, a, a car film or something like that and you come out or, or like a James Bond film and you come out of the cinema you have this sort of like swag about you don't you you have this little bit of a feeling where you're like oh I'm going to bore me home <laughs> you know it's like get in the car I'm going to floor it you know pretend I'm James Bond you know you, we all have those moments or maybe it's just me but um, and that was sort of like this sort of like impression we were going to get from the start but I was like I never recorded the voice back in 2016 so I was like as simple as it would to film it today, like literally I could do it right now, I could just say the lines and then just use that audio clip for the voiceover. But I was like, I didn't film it, I didn't record it, so I am I can't put it in, right? Because I was really trying to stay strict to what I had done. Um, so then we, uh, so that bit's not in it, but it's then him driving through the valleys. And it was difficult to get him driving, revving and racing through the valleys without him seeming like a boy racer or bad boy sort of thing. That was quite a difficult thing to pull off. And I, from what I managed to achieve with what little footage we had from awful angles, because I looked like two different people in two different shots, 
but it's it's still me the way the GoPro has warped it because we fixed the GoPro inside the car and the outside of the car and that because like I, I didn't have any proper um, car mounts for a bigger camera um, so it was it was the GoPro which was GoPro Hero 4 session favorite little camera brilliant loved it um, and that was it was difficult to use the footage i'd got but i was like i'm committed to trying to make something and i am I, i'm really chuffed with what we managed to we what i managed to create from what footage we got like i think it's somewhat like cheesy laughable but at the same time it's like it's not actually that bad <laughs> um so it was it was it was very fun to try and create that one over Alexandra's, but Alexandra's was very was very soothing, very angelic the way it is, and it's like that's great because that's the, the sort of theme I'm trying to go for with her. Whereas with James is a little bit erratic, but he has these moments of calm where he just he lives in the moment, as it were. Um, and so it was difficult because I did all the, the racing and the revving through the, the, the valley, through Elan Valley. Beautiful part of the world. If you haven't been to Elan Valley, go. Oh, beautiful. Not so much on a rainy day, but on a sunny day. It's lovely. Um, and I was like, I do need to put like more to it because he just sounded too aggressive, as it were. Um, so I was like, I need to sort of soften his character a little bit, and that's when I went with this sort of um, this melody, um, the sort of just oozes in the character, and you just see him like just casually driving. I think I took out all the car sounds, and he's just driving through um, the valley. <laughs> The idea was originally with the whole film in a linear order. Linear, 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 linearly. Why is that so difficult to say? Linearly order. It's not a word, but it is. Um, it would have opened with a flash forward, which I think now I wouldn't do. Um, and then it went into the bird coming down, Alexandra, and then she's getting her shots and stuff. And then it would sort of like you'd hear the car engine noise right as alexandra's filming but i wasn't sure if i wanted her to react to the noise because it's like happening near her or you know that was a creative decision i would have made during the editing process um even today i'm like oh it could have gone one way or the other uh and then i would have had james's line going five four three two one Blast off, which then wouldn't have made sense if I had the car revving to begin with and then the design. So, you know, I was hit and miss. Could have put the lines in. That's not really the point of this, anyway. Uh, and then it would have gone into his. But I was there are these moments where James and Alexandra pass each other, right? But there is no recognition. There is nothing until later on in the film. And I just wanted that sort of like that little thing in where it's like. It's that you you don't expect. Uh, what am I trying to say? What am I trying to say? It's like we 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 pass people on a daily basis, but we have no idea of who they are or what we will you know how how we might become to each other. Like, I can't really rationalize, rationalize it right now of why I wanted to do that, but it was like I just wanted to do it. Um, <laughs> two clips of um, character introductions for Alexandra the lead female, and James, the lead male. And I don't think I've actually said anything about the film itself. So the film was a romantic comedy, because uh, I thought this is something that's relatively simple and easy to film. I don't need a massive budget. I don't need to worry about special effects or visual effects and stuff like that. It can just be like a linear story. And I thought this is a simple thing to do. Plus, I love romantic comedies. So, you know, I was like, yeah, hell, let's do one. I'll try not to give too much away because I don't want someone trying to copyright this film. The word love is not mentioned in this film. Um, I was very, I was very 
strict on that. I was like, I don't want that in this. I was like, I love you. You've known him a day. <laughs> like, not even that, known him an evening. Um, so I was like, I didn't want that, but it was sort of like, not exactly running into each other's arms, but that sort of moment towards the end of the film. Um, I don't want to give too much away. It was it was better written than that. Um, but no, that's that's a whole load of spiel from me. There's, there's not much else to say. I've gone on quite a lot. Uh, I've mentioned every little bit of detail about this. Um, but yeah, the, the 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 clips are out to watch individually or during this. And I just I just want to say thank you to everyone that was involved really everyone that, that put themselves forward that uh that helped me along the way um yes we weren't able to create the 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 final product but hopefully this comes quite close to what we try to achieve um and i do i do really hope at some point through some rewrites because it does need a bit of rewriting um at some point in the future that i can come back to it and and do it really uh because it's it's definitely a story that i want to tell um because it's it's something that's somewhat happened to me but didn't happen to me um and i thought it was it was ironically a great film idea and then i was like well i'll make a film from it you know so it was it, it, it's not a, a story that's close to my heart at all but it's a story that I do connect with and I do I do really like the way I was trying to go with it with the film and I think if I can get it onto film, if I can create the full thing, I think it will be quite an enjoyable uh, thing. Um, and then I've got to, of course, say thanks to, um, to the lads, uh, Barry, Paddy and Nick. Without your guys' insight, um, um, to, to, to filmmaking and helping you guys with your projects and then learning from you i wouldn't have been in the position i probably wouldn't be in the position i'm in today knowing what i know now i probably wouldn't have found my interest in filmmaking as i have without your guys um intervention uh inspiration um you inspired me um <laughs> so thanks guys for that and then of course you know it's like my family um and then like fr and my friends and stuff and everyone that supported me throughout the process um yeah just a real big thank you anyway thanks and, and basically enjoy the clips i hope yeah at some point we can come back to it revisit it and create something <laughs>